Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Emmanuel Voisin. I'm the CEO of Voisin Consulting Life Sciences, um, a company dedicated to the regulatory approval and launch of health tech products. In, in this venture, I have personally witnessed a, a large number of times the fact that um, in silico medicine is not enough promoted and used in health tech product development. So I think this can only happen if we have a network of academia, industry, payers, regulators, policy makers, clinicians and patients, of course, working together along the same lines of bringing together computer simulation, modeling and simulation into healthcare development and launch. What is the Avicenna Alliance? Um, it's a global non-profit organization that brings together all these actors in order to use and promote computer modeling and simulation. Therefore, this is our common goal, and this is what we would like to present to you today. Obviously, at VCLS, um, we share the same uh, vision as the Avicenna Alliance, and therefore, um, I am going to introduce today the other members of the Alliance who are going to speak about their passion in um, health tech product development and launch. Let me introduce them to you. First of all, there will be Dr. Liz Garris, who is the professor at the University of Leuven. She's the director of the VPHI, and um, she leads the research and technology working group of the Alliance. Thierry Marshall will also speak. He's the global industry director at ANSYS, a key player in software simulation. Thierry is uh, the Secretary General of the Avicenna Alliance. We then have Dr. Marcus Reiterer, Distinguished Scientist, Technical Fellow si Strategy. He is the Head of the Scientific Operations at Medtronic. No need to introduce Medtronic. And Marcus leads the International Working Group of the Alliance. Last but not least, uh, Simon Sontag is the CEO of Vertonomy, a German startup company developing virtual patients. Simon leads the Notified Body Task Force within uh, the Alliance. So we're going to start with our speakers now. Um, Computer modeling and simulation has been used in major industries for decades in the aeronautics and automotive industries. And recently, modeling and simulations have emerged as a powerful tool in many areas of the medical device development, from image analysis to marketing insights and covering huge amount of areas. So, Marcus, would you please tell us how you implement the use of modeling and simulation and AI today at Medtronic? Yeah, hello and uh, good morning, everybody. So, at Medtronic, we use a combination of these powerful tools, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning on one side and then computer modeling and simulation on the other, but we also use advanced statistics and a lot of uh, experiments uh, to generate the regulatory evidence but it is the smart combination of these different applications and tools that bring the biggest success so obviously uh, we use artificial intelligence as a part of our business solutions but uh, also in the context of medical devices ai is an incredibly uh, a powerful tool but we need to recognize that it is also extremely data hungry and it's hungry of high quality data so if you try to, AI for, uh, to apply AI for something that's really new or uh, for rare cases or uh, things where anomalies um, matter a lot, it's really difficult to do that because you need to first generate the data. That's where modeling and simulation uh, has an advantage because you, you can make better uh, forecast based on, uh, based on principles. 
So how, how do we implement AI at Medtronic? First, we start with high quality data and then we go from there. Uh, one example that I can share is Neutrino. Uh, it's a startup that Medtronic bought. It has a AI powered nutrition platform that's a part of our comprehensive option for patients with diabetes. And another uh, example that's more between the, for the relationship between the doctors and Medtronic is a recent uh, acquisition of uh, Medicrea, a pioneer in the transformation of spinal surgery through artificial intelligence, predictive modeling, and patient-specific impl uh, implants. Thanks, Marcus. This was a synthetic and impactful insight. Um, now, uh, Thierry, at ANSYS, uh, how do you develop and provide software to academics and industry in order to support AI use in, in silico medicine? Well, thank you for the, the question, uh, Emmanuel. The software that we develop at ANSYS are used to model the behavior of any product, a car, an airplane, your computer, your cell phone, under specific condition. And by applying well-known mechanistic law, this model can predict what will happen and can quantify the impact of any action on the product or its environment. This is what we call engineering simulation. For the same approach is used in, in the healthcare industry for medical device and for uh, pharmaceutical uh, approach for decades in order to accelerate medical innovation. Over there, we call it the in situ approach because it's nicely complement and sometimes even replace this kind of uh, in vitro and in vivo approach. Now, this in situ method could be used very nicely with AI along two major avenues. First, in situ technology could uh, uh, be a fantastic source of data that we can use for uh, uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. Indeed, data usually come from numerous careful observation from where we can extract this rule from big data. But unfortunately, collecting all this data can be long, can be expensive to have reliable and valuable uh, data. There could be some gap and we might be missing some extreme case. So imagine if you can use some extensively validated computer model, you could generate an unlimited amount of data more quickly. This could complete and expand the existing available information, especially where no measurement is available yet, or for extreme case that may happen in the future, but for which we don't have a, uh, observation. Of course, it is required that this model will be very well validated. By that, I mean that the need to be able to accurately and quantitatively represent the reality. So we also need to continuously develop this uh, more advanced mechanistic model together with this kind of uh, uh, academic uh, community so that we can generate more data for new situation. So that's the first uh, avenue to contribute to generate more data. On the second avenue at ANSYS and within the Avicenna Alliance, we have the vision that artificial intelligence can complement quite nicely this kind of advanced existing uh, mechanistic model where research is still necessary because for example to capture some uh, specific uh, phenomena like a long-term biological uh, situation but imagine if we combine mechanistic model with ai this is opening the door to digital twin a computer-based model of any product for healthcare the combination of mechanistic model with ai could lead to virtual patient to personal digital avatar, which is a computer mo model of any people. I mean, me, you, Emmanuel, anyone from uh, our, uh, our audience. And this model would be continuously fed by live data coming from a smart wear wearables in order to predict the evolution of our body. The value of this uh, personal uh, digital uh, avatar would be used as this would be one crucial element in order to predict the emergence of pathology in our own body, but also give the opportunity to clinicians to test different uh, treatment and to recommend only the, the best solution. So these two have new, I mean, creating more reliable data for AI and 
exploiting AI to complement modeling and simulation toward digital avatar is what we see that in situ method, including AI, will have a fantastic impact on healthcare for tomorrow. Well, thank you, Thierry. Um, this is fantastic to hear. Um, now, you're opening a door. Uh, Lise, we hear from Thierry that academics are both developing and using artificial intelligence and modeling and simulation solutions for in silico medicine applications. So, could you please tell us more about what and how VPH contributes to this evolution and develops virtual patients? Thank you, Emmanuel. Well, in academia, there is, of course, the AI community that develops new technologies, making sure that they become even more powerful. But in order to have impact on, on healthcare, the focus of these applications needs to be present from the beginning during model development. So another part of the academic community has been responsible for laying the foundation there in, at the interface between technology and application. And that is the Virtual Physiological Human uh, Institute. They represent uh, academics such as me that work in the field of in silico medicine and that use state-of-the-art modeling and simulation tools to answer specific questions, biomedical questions on physiological processes, disease mechanisms, developing new treatment strategies, be it drugs, devices, or advanced therapies, or improve prevention. Now, having a solid background in, in engineering and mathematics allows us to use the state-of-the-art in silico technologies from complex differential equations to the latest AI technologies and, and in order to answer our questions. Now, in many cases, as indicated by Thierry already, we need more than one single technology to answer a question. So often uh, where we can, we start from the physiological side of the patient, of data or information from the patient, from known disease mechanisms uh, to lead the model. But they are increasingly combined with data-driven approaches to provide background information of things that, for instance, we are not including uh, specifically in physiological terms in our model. Um, sometimes AI or machine learning approaches are used to identify different patient groups and large data sets. Um, but then mechanistic based models are actually used to explain why you get these different disease phenotypes or these different patient groups. And those, uh, those mechanistic models can then lead the development of, of new treatment strategies. And let me just illustrate uh, one of these crossover combinations by one example of a modeling tool that is currently being evaluated for qualification at the, by the European Medicines Agency, EMA. Uh, this, this tool is uh, the Universal Immune System uh, Simulator, US, UISS, and it's developed by one of our colleagues at the University of Catania, Francesco Papalardo. Now, this tool is what we call an agent-based model of, uh, human, of the human immune system, which accounts for both the uh, innate and the acquired immune response. Now, it has um, been successfully applied to different diseases, and the specific application that has been submitted to AMA is that of the use in tuberculosis and the design of new vaccines against tuberculosis. Um, being an agent-based model, this, this uh, immune simulator takes into account mechanisms that we have um, and, and implements it in a rule-based way. And this rule-based way um, actually allows to uh, identify or to simulate uh, unexpected uh, emerging uh, phenomena that we cannot derive directly from the data or from the mechanism. So this isn't what we call a pure uh, data-driven AI. This is um, a distributed artificial intelligence tool. So that means that we can combine data and mechanisms to generate this new and actionable uh, knowledge. So because of the mechanistic nature of the tool that we have, um, this same framework can also be used, for instance, to look at vaccines for, uh, COVID, uh, for the COVID pandemic. So in short, the in silico uh, academic community has been very active in driving this combination of the latest in silico technologies and state-of-the-art uh, knowledge on uh, pathophysiology. Um, and this long-standing academic field has, has, has accelerated over the last decade, but it's also been because of our uh, alliance with the Avicenna Alliance, with industry in the Avicenna Alliance, that we have been able to push this even further uh, in, the past, in the last couple of years. Well, thank you, Lise. This is very informative also. Um, now, all this looks very impressive. However, is it accessible to small players such as the small and medium enterprises, the startups? Um, Simon, 
I know you do an, an extremely great job at Vertonomy on digital twins. So can you please tell us about it? Thank you very much, Emmanuel. So when talking about smaller players in this domain, there are two sides. So on the one hand, there are software developers like us at Vertonomy developing tools using AI and simulation to support mega device manufacturers. As this is a quite new and very dynamic market, also the providers of such tools have to be dynamic. And here's an advantage by contrast to corporates, as they can be more agile in the process. For example, we were able in a rather short time frame to establish a very close collaboration with now about 10 hospitals and clinicians, what is essential for gathering the real world data for our AI activities. This was only possible as they can be flexible and independent. We can also be agile in a way to optimally meet the needs of the users and adapt accordingly in a short time frame. Another aspect is related to the resources, which are typically way lower than at bigger companies. But we get a lot of support from providers of cloud computing system, like with Microsoft for Startups or the AWS Startup Package. And especially in an early stage of a company, this is very useful, as you cannot afford expensive GPU machines on your own. Also, AI technology in general is much more approachable today. And in our opinion, AI as a technology has rather reached a plateau now. And so now it's more about finding proper applications. And here, smaller players have a great chance. On the other hand, there are many device manufacturers. AI and simulation has the potential to reduce cost and time to market significantly, as have you heard from the other speakers. Therefore, also allowing smaller players to be innovative again. In addition, simulation can give evidence of the feasibility of a mega device already very early on in the development process. So one of our customers with only a limited resource used the data we provided as a proof of concept for their early stage fundraising purposes. This would not have been possible with very expensive manufacturing experiments considering the budget they have. Concerning our second question about the, the virtual patient and digital twin, so we at Vertonomy have developed a data-driven process to create our virtual patients or digital twins, as you call it. These can then be used by many device manufacturers to test various aspects during the development and approval process of the device, and thereby reduce the need for animals and humans. So one example I want to show is with a Swedish developer of a total official heart. It's a complete replacement of the native heart with a mechanical pump system. In 2018, this company had a series of failed animal trials, mainly due to a mismatch between the animal model and the device design. We have developed our virtual patients from real patient data, not just humans, but also animals. With this, it was possible to virtually test different animal models, and breeds, define a new implantation protocol, and also evaluate different design configurations. The best configuration in the end was used to repeat the animal trial. And this led to a series of successful surgeries at the end of 2019, which was a crucial milestone for the company to move on. So for them, this has saved both time and money. And in addition, it has reduced significantly the need for animals. And this is the mission we are all striving here forward, together also with the Avicenna Alliance. So now, Thank you all for um, these um, very exciting um, presentations. And um, as you heard, modeling and simulations and AI are now really part of everyday life in healthcare. That's a very important um, point that we have reached today. We are convinced that this cannot happen without a strong network putting together all the key players and also with nobody could have achieved that alone. So it's the fact that we are all together that makes it happen. However, this is not the end of the story. As healthcare and, um, uh, is moving into the digital uh, world and as AI is invading our world, we obviously need policies, new policies that will enable the transition from a traditional approach to uh, a much more modern and much more cost-efficient, safe and faster way of, um, of working. 
So at the Alliance, this is our goal. We want to make it happen. We work all together to make policies take place and invade our world. Together with the competent authorities, namely the notified bodies on one side, the FDA, the EMA, the HTA bodies in Europe, we work towards establishing good simulation practices. These good simulation practices will transform all the uncertainties around digital evidence that do exist now into um, scientific base on which we can rest our risk-benefit ratio when we place the products on the market. So good simulation practices from early stages of innovation into patients. So to summarize at the Avicenna Alliance and also at Voisin Consulting and its uh, incubator uh, neighborhood, our goal is really to ensure that safe, affordable and cost-effective healthcare is brought to the patients through the large-scale adoption of in silico medicine. And of course, at VCLS, we make this happen every day. This is our everyday life together with um, neighborhood, our neighbors in um, our incubator. We all work along the lines of networking, putting together our contacts, sharing our know-how so that uh, we reach our goal of including in silico medicine in our everyday life. So I just wanted to thank our panelists and um, thank you for your contribution and to thank the organizers for having invited us to speak today and the audience for this opportunity to share with you not only uh, our vision and our everyday life, but also to promote our vision on in silico medicine. Thank you.